Hi, in this series of videos, I will be providing tutorials for using Phoenix with a particular emphasis on fluid mechanics and transport modeling. Phoenix is an open source fired element solver, which is great for uh, research and also education purposes. So here we are uh, on Phoenix's website. Um, so the way Phoenix broadly works is that you type in the weak form of a uh, fired element a weak form of your model, your partial differential equation, and you just set up the fine element model. This is all done with a Python interface, and Phoenix runs high performance computing C codes behind the curtains to execute your uh, Python script. So um, here we are at the website. So I'm going to go over uh, <clears throat> the documentation. So if I click on documentation, then here you can see the Phoenix book, which is free. You can download for free, but this is a very old version. It's pretty detailed with many chapters <clears throat> ranging from solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, <clears throat> different applications, but you'll find that many of the syntax used here needs to be changed. There's also a more recent version, which is this book here, which you could also download for free. I'll provide links in the description box. So if we go to the documentations, here we can see that we have, uh, there are two sets of documentations. There's the newer Phoenix, Phoenix X, and then there's a the legacy Phoenix. So in this series of tutorials, I'll be focusing on the legacy Phoenix, which is the older version of Phoenix. Okay, so here we can uh, select the version that we want, 2019.1. I believe most of my tutorials are executed using the 2018 version, but there shouldn't be much difference between 2018 and 19. And then here you can click on Python, and here by clicking on demo, you can see all these sets of beginner tutorials. So in this video, we will be focusing on the Poisson equation. So this is the governing equation. You have the Poisson equation with a mix of Dirichlet and Newman boundary conditions. And, and you derive your weak form. And what I'm going to do, so you can see a set of tutorials with detailed explanations here. I'm going to go over this a modified version of this tutorial. And all of the codes are also uploaded. And you can see uh, a link to the GitHub uh, in the description box. OK, so here's how the code looks like. So you import Phoenix. And then here you can see we also import a measure. Uh, in some versions, depending on how you install it, measure might not be available. So you might get an error by executing import for measure. But you can add measure easily by using, uh, for example, if you're using Conda for installing Phoenix. So then what we do here, first we create a mesh. So this is a pretty standard structured uh, mesh and it's a rect uh, it's not structured, structured domain. So it's a rectangle in this case, and we generate a mesh using triangular elements. Here we define the function space V by setting this to one. This is a linear shape functions. If I want to do quadratic second order shape functions, I can easily change this to two. Then what I do here is that I define the boundaries, the boundary markers. So here I'm First, I'm tagging all of my boundaries to three. And now what I want to do is that I want to tag different boundaries with different numbers so I can assign boundary conditions on my rectangle. So, uh, and I will, in later videos, I will show you how you can um, uh, tag boundaries for more complex uh, geometries. So in this case, first I define using this boundary wall flux class, I define X equals zero. So this is done by using near x zero and zero. So this means near x equals zero with this tolerance. It will tag all the elements in this region. And then I tag this with one. I do a similar thing for y equals two, and I tag it with two. Then I set my Dirichlet boundary conditions. So on boundary two, which is y equals two, so the top of my domain, I set a constant uh, value, so it's equal to five, as my constant uh, Dirichlet boundary condition. Then I also define ds. So I need to add, if you want to add a Newman boundary condition to your weak form to have flux boundary conditions, you need to add this line to define your surface integral. Then here you can see I'm defining diffusion coefficient and de defining trial and test functions based on the function space V, which I defined above here. And then here I'm writing down the weak form of my governing equation, which is A is the left-hand side and L is the right-hand side, which contains a flux boundary condition. So DS1 means that I'm applying uh, 
new environment condition on the face that I tagged as one. And this is essentially, if you look at the weak form, this is this term here, the, the boundary condition, the new boundary condition that pops up in the weak form when you do integration by parts. Okay, then I have my weak form and here by using the solve command, I can solve this weak form. So by default, I think it uses LU decomposition to solve this equation, but you can also set uh, other solvers like GMRS and iterative solvers, which I'll talk about in later tutorials. And then you can save your file in VTK format like this, and then your code will be done. You can also save, so in the, in the first tutorials, I'll be showing simpler uh, cases, but you can also save your file using H5 format, which is more efficient for when you're running your codes on parallel. Okay, so if I run this code, which I've already did uh, on my cluster uh, using a job file, so you can write a certain job file to run your code if you're using a cluster. In this case, I just use one processor because it's a simple, uh, a simple model. And then I get the results, which I can load into Paraview. Uh, and here you can see the results that I get. This is the concentration that I saw for Poisson equation. You can see on the top, I have um, the, uh, the Dirichlet boundary condition, which was five. So that's the minimum value. And then I had the flux boundary condition on the left. So you can see kind of, like heat penetrating from the left into the domain. And at the top, it's a constant low uh, temperature or concentration if you're thinking about mass transport. So um, this is the result that we get here. And we can you know, process this data in Paraview. So for example, if you go to information, you can see the range of your data. You can also see the number of cells, number of points in your mesh that Phoenix generated for you. So if I go back to the command that I generated mesh, using this generate mesh command, uh, I set this number to 20. So if you set this to higher, you will have a higher resolution mesh. So later I'll talk about how you can also import mesh from uh, more advanced meshing uh, software. So here you can, if you change surface to surface with edges, you can see the mesh that we have used in solving this problem. So this is the first tutorial. In next tutorials, we will continue uh, talking about more advanced and more interesting um, things that we can do with Phoenix.